Hey, welcome to Gentry World with Flutter. This is the part 30 of the series. This video is a part of a series of videos where I create a small animation effect using Flutter Canvas and I'll show you how to code it up. So here's what we're going to create this time around. I first wanted to create plants swaying in the wind and then I got carried away. Now, now you're stuck with this field of green whatever and a pumpkin in the middle. Oh look, birds flying. Oh, how synchronized. I'm sure there's a dead body somewhere in the field as well. Anyway, here we are in the usual code. We have the random number generator object we will use it a lot this time around. Uh, the init state function where we create the animation and the controller so that we can get a regular tick we would use to update uh, our animation. And this bit of code is to load up the pumpkin image. We've done this before in a previous video, so I won't uh, explain how to include and load an image to a Flutter project uh, here. So we would use our usual particle system to create all the animation bits. Create particles and update particles functions do exactly what you would imagine. I've also set up a color set as before. Feel free to use your own set of uh, colors if you like. In my, in my painter canvas, it's expecting two parameters, particles and image, but I might add more later. Paint function has the usual offset computed so that we can align the drawing to the center. Um, particle class is empty for now, but uh, we will add more properties as we go along. We're going to start with creating the plants. And as usual, we begin by creating just the most basic plant you could think of. Just a single vertical line. So we could uh, give it a random color from our palette and set up the starting position and the ending position. While we are at it, let's set up the drawing of the plants as well. It's quite easy. We just draw a line segment from P1 to P2. The plants will spread across horizontally. So we will set a random position along x-axis and a random starting position along y-axis so they look more natural. We also have the stalk height as a parameter so we can vary the height of the plants easily. Okay, so now that we have one ugly looking part section done, let's see if we can make it move in the wind. 
As usual, we will use Perlin noise to get a smooth random value for the horizontal movement. So what we're going to do is to move about a static position smoothly. So for that, we will need to store the original position of the stalk. That's what the PO property uh, or properties are for. We will use a property called Z so that we could make the Perlin noise give us different values as it goes. While we are at it, let's get the spelling correct as well. <laughs> so for the animation, we will just move one end of the plant and keep the other end static because you don't have plants moving at both ends. Okay, what the f*** is that error? Luckily, Flutter tells us repeatedly there is an error, like if that would make it easier for us to find out what it is. Thanks a lot, compiler. Fine, it looks like it's because I forgot to initialize the pro Z property of the particle. Fine, there you are now. It is moving very calmly, like you would expect. Good result, good, good result. Now, I will add more segments to the stalk and the top three segments move and bottom three segments would remain static. You can experiment with this, but I do this to improve the realism of a plant. So back in the create plants function, I will add these segments. It's easier if we have a small function uh, for the displacement, so it looks less messy in the code. There you go. Now with a bit of copy pasta, we can create the stroke segments like this. We save the original positions of P1, P2 and P3 as shown. This is because we would be moving these three segments. So we would need the original positions as described before. Now let's go and draw these segments properly. So this is what it looks like if we didn't have the segments. It would be a straight line. Now let's draw each segment. And it looks more natural. So also let's add the code to move the top three segments. Notice that the displacements for each segment going down would be less and less. This gives a better natural movement effect. Now let's create a bunch of these parts.
Marvelous, marvelous. But I think they should have random thickness. So let's add another property that will hold the thickness value. Since we are writing a lot of code, it is better to refactor often to clean things up. We will move the store creation to a new function. Okay, now it looks much better. It looked like those weeds in a field swaying in the wind. Let's quickly bring these bits to the bottom of the screen. Now let's add a bit more realism by adding a few circles at the top of these stems. Uh, you can experiment with these things and see what looks best. I didn't want to go down the path of drawing actual leaves, but could be interesting. All right, now we get on with adding more to the scenery. Let's draw the mountains. So this is a static drawing. Uh, let's create this in the painter canvas. So the way to do is, is to create a path. We start at a point on the left border and go along the X axis, adding a line segment to the path. Pearly noise gives us a smooth random value necessary for the height variation.
okay, okay. We got something going now. The plants are covering the beauty of the mountain. Perhaps we could scale the plants down a bit. Let's give a gradient to the mountain color. It looks a bit odd now. For that, we will use a linear gradient. It's quite easy. Let's create a function to get us a linear gradient. You can try out different colors here, but I'm going to stick with these. Okay, next up is the sky. In the last video, we created the sky with a radial gradient. Let's do the same, but this time with different colors. Awesome! I love the orange sky. It makes me thirsty for Fanta. So we've come to the part where we draw that pumpkin. This is easier because I have a picture of the pumpkin, so it's a matter of drawing that image and aligning it properly onto a cross of some sort.
Now, the sky wouldn't be the same without some birds flying about. It adds to the ominous setting. So let's create some birds. We will add them uh, to a separate list. This is actually quite simple. First, let's start with a blob that just moves across the sky. So for that, at each X position, we will get a smooth random value from Perlin function and also give each bird some velocity. That's, uh, that is represented by the X. Drawing a bird is a matter of drawing a circle. Alright, as we see these birds don't have wings, but nonetheless they fly across the sky. It must be because of Halloween. Better to have individual speeds for each bird. That makes it a bit better. And now let's add the wings. So this can be done with two points, one to the left of the body and one to the right of the body. Uh, on the animation function, let's simulate the flapping. So when the wings are flapped, their tips go up and down. We can use a sine function to generate the smooth variation between minus one and plus one. Uh, we will set this to the vertical position of the wing tips. and draw the tips with the line from the body to the left and line to the right. So I made a small mistake here on the animation. P2 and P3 horizontal values should just linearly increase. So we can add the G to the DX as shown. 
For the vertical positions, they should move up and down about the original Y position. So we scale the sign value by, let's say, 5. Uh, that's how far up and down the wing, wing tips will move. Uh, and then add to the POY value. Grand! Now it's a matter of resetting the birds when they have moved out of the frame uh, to some initial value so they keep flying across the screen. So that's it. Became a long video, but that's the horror of Halloween. <laughs> Enjoy! As always, if you like what I create, like, share and subscribe to the channel for more. Until next time.